Hello and welcome again to another edition of Miss Nikki's Monster Madhouse. This is the second of two features. Last, uh, the last episode we showed a uh, feature produced by and starring Ken Curtis, Festus from Gunsmoke. That was Attack of the Killer Throughs. This time we're dealing with the giant Gila monster. Produced by Festus himself, Ken Curtis. All right, you smart idiot. In this movie, of course, we have a giant lizard who's roaming around this small town, crushing automobiles and, and eating teenagers. But there's this wonderful singing teenager. He's, uh, he's actually a mechanic, but doggone it, he's one heck of a rock and roll singer. My baby, she rocks and rolls, and rocks whenever she wants. My baby, she swings and sings, and swings whenever I bring. But not even Gene Simmons' long lizard tongue can compete with the talent of ZZ Top Cat. It's a Texas musical showdown in The Giant Gila Monster. There are still vast and virtually unexplored regions, bleak and desolate, where no human ever goes and no light is ever seen. It is as though the land had been posted by God. It is in these lonely areas of the impenetrable forest and dark shadows that the Gila monster still lives. How large the dreaded Gila monster grows, no man can say. Come home for dinner. 
That's why his father was so upset. Thanks. Here's old man Harris. That fella has a jewel of a car. Well, luck, mate. <laughs> well. Hey! Hey, how are you yelling? Yeah, hello, Fisherman. You want to sell that deuce? Why, you fellas always after me to buy my car. That 32 is the ideal stock to convert to a bomb. Buying a car, son, is just like getting married or going to New York City. Everybody ought to do it once, but nobody ought to do it twice. <laughs> hey, I can get you a good price on that. Paid six hundred and ninety-five dollars for that car twenty-six years ago. Ten years ago, wasn't worth a dime. Last month, I turned down a hundred for it. When it gets back up to six ninety-five again. I'll sell it. <laughs> hey, Spook, uh, give me a snort of that there soda bar. <laughs> hey, gang, you know, this will be Lisa's first trip to a drive-in. Oh, we have drive-ins in France, too. Yeah? Yes, I went twice with my brother on his motor scooter. Brother <laughs> <laughs> on a motor scooter. Now, that's my idea of absolutely nothing to do. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll drag you to Bartonell's corner. Oh, I can't. I'm driving barefoot. You still running on that old rubber? Yeah. Hey, Spook, when Pat and Liz get here, will you tell them that we went to the drive-in and for them to catch up? Thank you. We sure will. And I'll give you 150 bucks. You're talking like my butcher switch. <laughs> you think he's playing with, kids? <laughs>
Let me have it for a couple of days and I'll tune it up for you. Oh, you choke it off so I could never catch it. You couldn't catch that deuce of mine right now. Now, let me have that patrol car. I'll turn it into a slingshot that'll catch anybody. We'll make a deal. Drive-in, but they didn't show up. We wondered what happened. Were they in any kind of trouble? What do you mean? You know. Um, no, I don't think so. Chase, level with me. I'm almost positive they weren't in any trouble. I'd know. Do you think they might have run off to get married? going steady for over a year now, and I know they talked about it, but no, not like for right now. Did Pat have any money stashed? <sighs> yeah, some. Like how much? Well, he was talking about getting a new blower in the mill. That's about 500 bucks. Where did he get that kind of money? He saved it. His old man gives him a good allowance when he's not mad at him. What bank does he use? Where he's dead to find out. He could have been saving if he got married, couldn't he? His money. I guess he could do whatever he wants with it. But you know, if he eloped, his old man had put him down flat. I know. But Pat's smart enough to provide for himself till the old man cooled off. Pat's the only one of the gang I couldn't slow down. Did you check the hospital? Yeah. Where could I find the rest of the gang? I don't know about Bob and Gordy, but Chuck and Rick went over to Easton. They wanted to check with the wheel cats about next Saturday night's splatter party. Next Saturday night? Yeah. You warn the gang I'll be cruising that pass that night. No dragon. Okay, I'll tell them. If you get any postcards from those two, let me know. Jackson. 
Anderson this afternoon. Uh, the sheriff got a new patrol car. We'll get a tune-up job out of that. Is that night so safe out there? Well, if it decides to blow, it's not safe anywhere. I'll get it. That's not our range. No, it's the sheriff's. If there's been a wreck, I get a tow job out of it. I also have a deal with the ambulance if someone's hurt. <laughs> you work all the angles, don't you, Chase? Mr. Compton, I have to. Hello, Sheriff. Yes. About 12 miles out beyond the red schoolhouse, a car has run into the ditch. Oh. Yeah, it's a pretty bad wreck. What kind of a car? Oh, it's a sedan, a Pontiac, I believe. Someone could have been hurt pretty bad. Maybe she'd get out there pretty quick. Uh, did you stop and investigate? been a wreck 12 miles out of town. Where's the wrecker? Hall. Oh, I used the A-frame to build a doggone rock garden. Look, you take your car and keep the city wreckers off. I'll get our wrecker and follow you. Well, is 
there anything else I can do here, Sheriff? If not, I'll get this on back to the garage. No, oh, go ahead. Chase, will you give me a hand? I want to take some pictures of those skid marks. You stand by them for a scale. Sure, glad to, Sheriff. Good. some hitchhiker. Or it might have belonged to the fellow that stole that car and wrecked it. Drive 
buy this car? Bender's cutting the wheel. Sure I can. The motor works, see? But thanks for everything, Dad. You're a cotton-picking prince. Okay, just a second. I'll get out of the way. What is it? Now move over, Dad. I want to pass. Give me a tow, Dad. The steering wheel won't work. Okay. You take a nap. My baby, she rocks and rolls and rocks whenever she walks. My baby, she rocks and rolls and rocks whenever she talks. Baby's a rock and roll and tippy toe and never know when all is flowing, baby. My baby, she swings and sings and swings whenever I bring her things. She swings and sings and swings for a little diamond ring. Swing and sing and bells a ring and happy playing and plays a ring and baby. My baby, she rocks and rolls and rocks whenever she walks. My baby, she swings and sings. Swing whenever I bring her things. A rock and roll and tippy toe and never know and always glow and swing and sing and bells a ring and happy play. Pleasure ring and baby. Good afternoon, Mr. Smith. Like man, guys have had their heads chopped off for less than that. For what? For feeling so doggone good when I feel so bad. How'd I get here anyway? I told you in this morning, remember? Matter of fact, I remember very, very little. You said somebody ran you into the ditch, but I didn't see any other cars. How'd you ever get me in that bed, anyway? I carried you in there, and I sat on you till you fell asleep. That must have been quite a chore. You wouldn't have gotten very far in your condition. Well, look, I really appreciate it. Um, Chase Winstead. Chase. And I, uh, by golly, how much I owe you? Well, I bent the fender out from the wheel. Want me to fill it in and touch it up for you? No, I don't think so. I'll uh, get that done when I get back to the city. Here, have some coffee. Oh, great. How about two bucks? Man, this coffee's worth two bucks all by itself. How about the toe? No, I was coming this way anyway. I missed out on a little studying time. Make it three bucks. <laughs> Dad, you go to school? Sort of. I take a correspondence course in engineering. Well, look, I really feel indebted to you, and I'd like to do something to pay you back. Now, next time you're in the town, there's my card. Look me up, will you? All right. Will do. Okay. On, oh, by the way. Buy yourself a sponge rubber hammer, man. All right, I will. I'll see you, Chase. Thank you. Steamroller Smith, the disc jockey. Mr. Smith! Two twenties. How about that? Sheriff? Howdy, son. Have you heard anything from Pat and Liz? No, nothing. Chase, I'm in a jam, and I need your help. Wheeler swings a big enough stick in this country to make it rough, and he's doing it. Oh, I can understand his concern about Pat, but I just don't have a big enough force to comb this area inch by inch. Is he demanding that? There was a man killed in a wreck in a small canyon in a big city last year, and it took him 19 days to find him. I don't know what they expect of me. Yeah, I remember that. Well, look, Sheriff, maybe I can get tomorrow off and... I'll get the gang and we can go out and search that pass. At least you can put that in your report. I was hoping you'd say that. I can start at the upper end and work towards you. Uh, can I have your help in another matter? Sure, what? You remember how those skid marks just went at right angles to the direction the car was traveling? That's right, they did. 
Headquarters think I'm nuts. Well, then they're nuts. Didn't didn't you send them that picture? Well, I'm not the world's greatest photographer. Pictures didn't come out. Can't see the skid marks on the blacktop. Well, that's what happened. I even wiped up the rubber dust with my fingers. You might have to sign a statement to that effect for me. You got it. Look, you can even see the bald spots on the tires where they went sideways. Yeah, that's the spot, all right. But there's another thing that puzzles me. Yeah, what? How those tires got off of that car and almost on yours. Well, look, on, on this wreck, they'd rot. And on my, on my rod, they could prevent a blowout. Maybe even an accident. Well, take good care of them in case the owner shows up. Right. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Right. along here for about eight miles. We'll start from here and you come from the other end. All right. I wonder what that was. Oh, probably just a little rock slide. 
For some reason, this place is with the creek. It always has. Lisa! Turn the motor on. The winch is already engaged. Now if I yell, turn the key off. Okay. Unlike most uh, drive-in double features like this movie, this movie actually got an international release. And since Ray Kellogg did the special effects, they said, hey, Ray, you can go ahead and direct it, my man. This movie was produced, as I said, by Ken Curtis and uh, a local drive-in theater owner there in Texas who wanted to make cheap films to show to his audience, and he got what he asked for.
not so fast, are you? What for? <laughs> Did you ever play football? With the Green Bay Packers. I... <laughs> <laughs> Put me down. No, not till you tell me what's going on. All right, if you close your eyes. I, I don't know what's happening, but they're closed. Keep them closed.
foot. Wait a minute, Sheriff. You've got a sore foot. Oh, no. We take my mind away. He's old shiny bright. Well, we'll take my car. Come on, Harris. Did you see it? No, I didn't see it, but I sure heard about it. Can I open this thing up? Yeah, go ahead. Things 
that you have did to me. Oh, you nag me till you're whore, so I'm a suing for divorce. Little darling, I'll forget your memory. Hey, <laughs> Grim, it's good. Baby, she rocks and rolls and rocks whenever she talks. My baby's a rock. Hey, you gonna leave home? I'm going to spend the night with the Blackwells. Mommy said it was all right. Will you take me over? Well, I don't know, Missy. Gosh, that's two or three miles out of my way. Oh, sure, we will. 
Chase, what in the world have you done to that car of yours? It's a new fuel mixture. You like it? I just barely touched the gas pedal and the back wheel started to spin. Why, I was two blocks down the road before I even knew I'd left home. Come on, Mom. I'm just trying to make a hot rodder out of you. Okay. Hello. Yeah, hello, Sheriff. The what? Book on reptiles. Yeah, I guess I still have it around here somewhere. Yeah, sure. I have to take Missy over by the Blackwells. I'll stop by on my way to pick up Lisa. Okay? Well, now I'm going to tell you something you don't know. I've been talking to a zoologist. And the Halo Monster size is controlled, uh, like everything else, by a sort of a thyroid or pituitary gland. Sometimes a change in diet can throw the balance all out of whack. Either the cells break down too fast or build up too slow. And this upset makes either runts or giants out of them. Good, but what's that mean to me? Oh, I'm coming to that. The zoologist also told me about a, a doctor who just found the bones of some huge animals down in Tangayika. And the theory was that uh, they lived in kind of river delta country and certain salts had washed into the valley, been absorbed by the plants, and then transferred to the animals, causing them to be giants. I, yeah, I know. I probably sound a little bit like Harris, but let me tell the whole thing in my own words. There was another report out of Russia or the Ukraine. It was in the paper a couple of months ago. Maybe you saw it. About a baby that weighed 130 pounds when it was 10 months old and was taller than its mother. Grew up to be a giant. Yeah, and that same thing could happen right here. Did you see any footprints around any of those wrecks? No. Hilo monster footprints? Yeah, a big one. About the size of a bus. Oh, come on. Are you serious? Well, I don't know. But Harris saw it, and some of the survivors of the train wreck saw it. A giant lizard. Train wreck? Where? At the bridge over Wilson's Wash. When? Tonight, about an hour ago. The troopers were inclined to pass it off as shock or optical illusion. You can't always believe what Harris said. A Gila monster. Pink and black stripes. You know, I told a guy in the other day, and he said he'd been forced off the road by something like that. I didn't believe him because he'd been drinking. And another thing, when we were looking for Pat's car, we saw where something had been drugged down the wash. You know, if they could have gotten that big, they could have knocked Mr. Compton's truck off that road. Could have gotten him. I shouldn't have told you about this until after the party, but I just thought you'd want to know. Hadn't we better warn everybody? No. It operates in and around the wash. Troopers have got that staked out for a couple of miles. Just keep it to yourself. It might cause panic. Okay, Sheriff, whatever you say. Try and forget it for now and have some fun, will you, boy? Now, do you 
mind telling me what this is all about? Have you been down to the train wreck? No. Well, I have. I talked to a trooper about my son's car. He said it shouldn't have been moved until a thorough investigation had been made and it had been photographed. This wasn't done, was it, Sheriff? I thought not. It was removed and clues lost without authority. You didn't put that in your report, did you, Sheriff? Of course you didn't. And I'll tell you why. You were protecting that Chase Winston. Covering him regardless of the effect it might have on others. Chase was only trying to help. He's your son's friend. Probably the best one he ever had. Of course it wasn't in the report. What good would it do? Any kid can make a mistake, Mr. Wheeler. Even yours. But, Sheriff, it's my son that's missing. Let me ask you something else. Have you heard the reports about a giant lizard? Do you believe him? I don't know, Mr. Wheeler. Doesn't seem possible. Well, why not? There have been giants before. That's true. But how could anything that big go unnoticed in this area? Have you ever walked the length of Williams Wash? No. You know anybody that has? No. That area is so choked with underbrush, it isn't even good hunting ground. And I say it is possible for a giant lizard to have lived there for years without being seen. Now, if that is the case, my son's dead. So is Compton. I can't blame you for what's happened to Pat, but Compton's death is on your hands. How did you come to that conclusion? I'll tell you how. His truck was found only two miles beyond Pat's car. And if you'd investigated that area thoroughly, as you're paid to do, Compton might not have died. Well, now come out here. I want to show you something else. Now, something may have hit this car, but it didn't take the tires off. And where did those new white sidewalls on Chase Winston's hot rod come from? Here, I guess. There was a tow in charge against he us. He presumed the bill wouldn't be paid, so he borrowed the tires in the meantime? Perhaps. That's thievery. Destroying evidence and obstructing justice. Now, your last official act of office will be to arrest that boy and bring him in. And I'll go along to make sure that it's done. on my elephant in Bangkok, Siam. <laughs> but you got to pay your own way over there and back. Oh, oh, no. No. Okay, here it is now. See what you think of it. Cause ever brought to stay Cause they find me to that way Hey, great. No, they find me to that way Yet. I'm going to play the rest of it. How do you like it? Yeah. Okay, who is the singer? Elvis, one of the Everly. Bill Darnell. Kate Smith. Oh. Oh. Very funny what you lose. Look, the same guy 
you hear singing on the record also wrote the song. Now, now, who is it? Does anybody know? Well, I don't know. Who is it? Okay, okay, okay. It's going to come out on records in a couple of months, and you can find his name on the label. Oh! oh, 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 oh I know it is. Who? Come on, tell us. Seb did it. You're right. Oh, you did it, Chase. Why didn't you say something? You didn't tell us. Well, I didn't know there was anything I'd want to admit to. Oh. Come on up here, boy. Come on. Come on. Also over at the station the other day, Chase played me another little song. It's kind of different from this one. But I imagine with a little coaxing, you know, by hitting your hands together like this, he might give you a little preview of it. What do you say? Yeah. Chase. I'm going to help. Do 
You know what's in here? Nitroglycerin, enough to blow up half this town. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to help. All right. Now take these and hold them and don't let them bump. And for heaven's sakes, don't drop them.
There was actually a 2012 remake of the giant Gila monster. Yeah, you probably never heard of it either. And here's what director Joe Dante had to say about this film. Most of this is just the giant Gila monster crawling around really slowly on miniature sets, sometimes crushing little miniature trains and miniature cars. He doesn't really get to do much, but there's plenty of good creepy stuff, and what kids want to see is that. Absolutely right. That's what we kids love to see. So until next time, hey, take a seat at this. And the Lord.